All right, how about I just start? Is there a volunteer who'd like to start first? Uh, currently to share out, what are you currently doing with substitute teaching and what is something that you'd like to learn out of the session today? Volunteers, go ahead. I just started substitute teaching, did a little bit on the mainland. I've just moved over here, I did a little bit here. Okay. Uh, so one thing I'd like to know is, how do you introduce yourself in the mm -hmm, class? Mm -hmm. Kind of set the tone. Okay. And then how do you get individuals or groups back on track if they're starting to get distracted? Wander. Good. Like that. All right. Who else would like to share out? Somebody from this table? Go ahead. Okay. I've been a, I was you know, in, a public, in, in public and private school, mm -hmm. but I've been away for a while. Mm -hmm. So, but we are in the, uh, we own a business, but mm -hmm. I still want to get into the teaching mm -hmm. course. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I'm here for the substitute. Terrific. Thank you for sharing. How about you, sir? Uh, I'm uh, subbing with the Leeward District. Started in August. Okay. And uh, I guess what I'd like to know is how you, well, there's some schools are better than others in terms of classroom management. Correct. That's right. My biggest. Challenge. Classroom Sometimes management. It's not a problem, but every once mm -hmm. in a while you get a nightmare assignment. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I suggest heading after my session over to the classroom management session too. I will tap on it a little bit and give you some strategies, but that's a good place to go to get a little bit more on that. And she's going to talk about instructional strategies as well in her in her um, session. How about you, sir? Uh, I already had a, a couple of uh, private school something, but okay. Kind of similar to that is okay. You know, so Right. The question about how far you want to go, you're just there for the day. Right. How far do you really want to go to be in the district that? Right, so. right. Okay, good. I substitute teach um, preschool age children. Okay. It's um, private schools. Okay. And we get jobs by looking on a computer when jobs open up so we put our name in. So okay. I could go anywhere. Yes. Any part of the island. Right. And what I know is when you're there, you know, you look at the board and you look mm -hmm. at the schedule and mm -hmm. you prepare yourself. You, mm -hmm. prepare, right. you look at what right. they're offering you. Right. And um, just jump in. Yes. Don't stand around. Just yeah. jump in. Okay. What would you like to get out of today's session? How do we remember their name? Okay, I don't know if I've got the tool for that, but we'll try. Right, and it's hard when you're there for a day. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. How about you, ma'am? I was a substitute teacher a couple of, maybe seven, eight years ago. Now I'm currently a part-time teacher under Title One, but I want to get back into substitute teaching. Okay. And so great questions about classroom management, because you're right, there's right classrooms that are... But I guess it's like, how do I make sure that I, I want to make sure that I accomplish what the teacher wants done for that day? Okay. Be flexible. Okay. The real classroom. Okay. Is capable of doing Okay. That. Sounds great. Anyone else want to share? Go ahead. Well, um, I substituted in the Mauna Loa complex in around 1990. Mm -hmm. Finished my federal career two years ago, retired. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm considering mm -hmm. going back. I took my substitute teacher one week course and um, wanting to go back into the elementary school okay. and offer my knowledge and services and gain from whatever. Okay. So from current substitute teachers mm -hmm. that are actually doing it right now, mm -hmm. I would like to learn uh, just a little bit about some of their experiences. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Anyone else? Go ahead. Um, I currently work with deaf students. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And my, my subbing is um, I'm new to, to subbing. Okay. And what I would like to know is how you walk in the classroom and replace the teacher for the day. Okay. And accomplish their goals. Okay. I feel that the students will <coughs> sort of work you and, and you mm -hmm. don't really get as much done as would like to. Sure. So, yeah. I'd like to be able to replace okay. the teacher for the day. Wonderful, because this does touch on that a little bit. Okay? Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, there is a sign-in sheet in the back. I don't expect you to move with your, but there are some handouts if you want to just pick up a few handouts, okay? 
Okay, so my name is Holly Jackson, and I'll be facilitating for the next 45 minutes with you folks. So in this workshop, um, we're going to be able to recognize the qualities of a professional substitute educator and explore and discuss the skills necessary for a successful substitute educator. All right, first topic. So qualities of a professional substitute educator. Um, you're going to adequately prepare and be on time for the assignment. That's one of the most important parts. You're going to get these phone calls, and they're going to come in real early in the morning or late in the evening. If it's a new school that you're not familiar with, like I used to teach at Iroquois Point Elementary. We're located on a military, used to be a military base, but it's pretty difficult to get and find your way and meander through the, the um, community to find the school. So, you know, that's something you really want to do and be familiar with the schools that you've signed up for and maybe take a dry run and go see where they're at and locate it so that you know that you're going to show up on time uh, for that position. It is, you know, when you're running late, that becomes a reputation that you're kind of setting forth with the school secretary. So you want to just make sure you're there on time, you're prepared and ready to go. Uh, and so my suggestion is always to start early, 7.30, you know, walk in the door. The kids are going to come in at 7.45, if you can come in even at 7.15. Classroom teacher, of me being the classroom teacher when I taught in the classroom, um, I definitely was there by 6.45. That was my bell ringer. And I knew I had an hour to prep and be ready for my day before my students arrived, okay? So something to think about. So you need to remain professional and ethical at all times in all situations with staff members, parents, and students. What happens in the classroom, if you know one of the kids' parents in there, you need to maintain that confidentiality. You can't walk out and say, wow, this teacher really needs to work on this or that and share that with another faculty member on campus. Um, they most likely will not hire you again. And that's something that you don't want to happen. So you gotta be, make sure that you're very professional. Self-confident about what you're doing, enthusiastic and open-minded. You don't know what you're gonna get that day when you walk in the door. You got to be open-minded. You got to be able to go with what's happening within the school environment. You may be in a situation where there's a lockdown for an hour. Something's going on at one of the schools in the area. So you've got to be able to adapt to what's happening. You are a teacher and you're not a study hall keeper. So that's something to really think about. So you don't want to be sitting at your desk. You want to be up and moving. Put on your little tracker. You know, see how many steps you make in a day, in a class period. But you want to be moving. If the kids know you're moving, the behaviors are going to be handled a lot better in the classroom than you sitting down at a desk and saying, "Here we go. Work on this worksheet." You got to become interactive with them. Okay. Be friendly, but be firm with them. You know, be friendly. But you got to hold that firmness that you're there to be um, working with them for the day. Okay, so respectful of all stu students, knowing uh, they need patience, consistency, good judgment, and a positive sense of humor. They like that. They like to have fun. You know, they like you to come in and sort of not make it a whole ball of fun, but you can even just start with a quote up on the board for the day, you know, and, and sort of guide it with that. You know, what are your thoughts, um, boys and girls? Focus on the students and their learning. So that's your main focus, focusing on their learning for the day. So you really want to stay away from using your cell phone. Uh, that should stay in your backpack, your pocket, um, somewhere where you're not constantly checking your phone. You're on the clock and working. Administration walk in and out of classrooms all the time. Coaches walk in and out of classrooms all the time. District people, myself, walk in and out of classes all the time. If we see people on their phones, you're on the job, right? So you shouldn't be on the phone. If for some reason there's no lesson plans and they send it to your phone through an email, you want to ask the school secretary to print it out for you. Because uh, someone, you walk in and see them on the phone and we're not going to know if you're doing a lesson plan idea or what's going on. So I highly suggest to stay off your phone, stay away from reading the newspaper. I've had a sub before that they'd come in, get their newspaper, and they pretty much, I'd walk by and they'd still be reading that newspaper at 9 o'clock. Um, so you know, stay away from that kind of stuff. Be careful about being too personal with your students. You have them for the day. Um, you don't want to share out a whole lot of personal stories. You can share out stories that are relevant to what's going on in the learning atmosphere, but be very careful about what you do share out. Um, remain at work until you're scheduled at the end of your work assignment. So 2 o'clock is not when your job ends. Your job ends at 2.45, so something to think about. Um, you know, are you grabbing your things and walking out with the students? You know, that gets your jobs until that, that last 2.45 period. Um, so you got to make sure you're, you stay within that time frame. 
Uh, you're not entitled to the teacher's prep period. Something to think about. So we have, there's certain kinds of prep periods going on that high schoolers may have, the middle school teachers, not so much the elementary teachers, but they may have some other assignment for you folks to do. So something to think about. So if you have prep time in there, you can talk to the grade level chairperson if there's not something in there, whoever's the grade level chair, or maybe the office, and just pop in and say, you know what, I have prep period for 45 minutes. Is there something that I could help out or do? That's going to go over real well with the office staff, okay? And I did talk about the confidentiality. And if you see anything going on, child abuse, um, anything of neglect, it's your job to tell the um, administrator what you saw for the day, okay? I saw just last week a, a student in a classroom that I walked in that had Band-Aids all up and down their arms. You knew that they were cutting themselves. And I had said to the teacher that I was mentoring, did you ad report this? Yes, they know about it. Did you report this today? You need to report it today. Even though it's happening, you need to report it today. You don't know if those band-aids are from yesterday or today or whatever the situation is. So it's your job to make sure you report that in. Okay? And how would you report it in? Right? Is that, did I answer your question? Yay! Okay. Um, during your recess time. So if you don't have recess duty, you're going to head up to the office and just step out and say to the administration, I have something I want to share out with you. The counselor. Um, during your lunch time, go real quick. It has to be done throughout the day. It cannot be done at the end of the day. That child's going to go home already. So it needs to be addressed during the school day. Okay? So nothing is mentioned to the student? I would let it go. Yeah. Yep. That's you do not point. want to address it to the student. You're just going to... I mean, like, how come you have all the bandages? No. I, highly yep. I would just say, I'm in this room, and this is what I'm right. doing for the day. I noticed this. I just right. wanted to share out. And they'll call that student out. So good question. OK, so dressing professionally, as you all know, um, you know that is something that you really need to make sure that you're doing. So it says avoiding wearing jeans. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, this is a PowerPoint that was put together not by me. But I, you know, if they're nice looking jeans and you're dressed with a nice shirt and ready to go, I think that's appropriate for, for Hawaii. Um, be careful with the flip flops. So, you know, there are school dress codes. So you can go and ask the, when you do sign up to substitute at the school, ask, is there a dress code? Uh, several schools I worked at, there was dress codes where you could not wear the rubber floppy slippers. That, that was just, you know, something that the school had decided as a staff that they couldn't. So you want to make sure that you're, um, as well, dressing appropriately. Also, schools will have polo shirts with, um, you know, the name of the school on there. And if that's a school that you are really substituting out a lot, you may want to reach out and ask, hey, how could I get maybe one of those shirts? It's not going to say staff on it, but it might say, you know, YNIA Elementary or Nanakuli Elementary or, or whatever. And that might be something that you can just put on for the day when you come to teach, um, which, is, which is fine. Dress in layers because you don't know if you're going to be in and out of a classroom. Air conditioning sometimes. You're lucky if you get a job where you're in air conditioning. Sometimes you're not, okay? You never know if you're going to be teaching PE, right? Elementary all the way up to high school. You may go in and the teacher, and I'll be honest, when I was a teacher, classroom teacher, I'd be like, yeah substitute they're gonna do some PE today <laughs> because it was a fun time and we you know some schools do not have PE teachers so we are the PE teachers and so I would put in a plan you know and I would often let them know in the um, when I would call it in I just want to let you know today you're gonna to be doing a 45 minute PE lesson so that they would know but sometimes they won't uh, give you that information Arrive at least 30 minutes early to check in for the, um, into the office to find out where you're going to be substitute teaching. Um, I think a, lo a lot of you guys already know about this because it seems like you're sub subbing already, but get a school map. If you're new to it, ask for a school map. Uh, know where you need to go. If there's an emergency, know where the fire drill is, where the fire plan, where you're supposed to be heading out the door. So you want to check for that. That's usually on the um, exit as you leave the classroom. Find out what their plan is for lockdowns. What do they do for lockdowns? So you can ask those kind of questions. Hopefully that's in that substitute handbook that they left for you for lesson plans, but sometimes it's not. So you could just do a real quick, hey, you know, you never know, right? I've taught at schools that are close to a high school, so we've had some lockdown situations going on. Um, and so you need to know what that procedure is, okay? 
Make sure you put your personal belongings in a secure place, so don't leave them out on the desk. Find a drawer to put them in, lock them up somewhere. If you leave your classroom, make sure you lock the classroom. Um, just things, you know, class schools have security guards, but they're very open here in Hawaii. Okay? Make sure you review the lesson plans and look at, for all the materials that day. Okay? Think ahead, consider strategies to expand or enhance the lesson plan if needed. I'm going to give you some tips on that at the end. Put your name on the board, right? Set the agenda. Look at the teachers, what they have in their, in their lesson plans. Put the agenda on the board. Put time frames next to that agenda. From this time to this time, this is what we're doing today. From this time to this time. They're going to address you and say, you know, my teacher does that differently. I understand. Today we got this new plan. This is our new plan. Go over the agenda with the kids in the morning. You know, here's what we're going to be working on. If it's a high school and you've got this amount of time, break that hour into increments. Ten minutes, we're going to do journal writing, whatever it is. Um, Greet your students at the door. When you walk in, when you come in for the day, greet them at the door. High school, middle school, elementary, greet them at the door. Hi, welcome aboard. Glad you're here today. Oh, you're new, mister. Sure am. Excited to be here. Happy to be here and be in your classroom today. Set that presence. Okay, set that presence with them. Welcome them. Look in their eyes and welcome them, right? Oh, we know we can mess off today. Got a substitute. You're greeting them at the door to stop that from happening the minute they come in the door, that they know that you're here and you're invested in the day. Question? Well, what do you do when they ask, or do you even respond, or what? Uh, where's my teacher? She's out for the day. Okay. That's all you need to say. You don't need to give details. She's out for the day, or he's out for the day. Um, I'll be here for the day, and we may see you again, right? I might be your substitute in the future, right? But you don't want to give a lot of details as to where they're at. Um, make sure you study the seating chart. If you can't find one, make your own. Come in with a piece of paper, just start Xing it off, put their names down. That was where you were wondering who's who. Yeah. Come in with some. Yep. Yep. Or even just buy some masking tape yourself yeah. and just have them really quick write their name on there, slap it on their shirt. And, do all that. and when they leave, have them put it back on their desk so that when they leave to go to recess, it's not flying around right. on the recess right. field. But I suggest having a seating chart. And there's no way you're going to learn everybody's name no. with. And I, I, you know, it's just a, a difficult I, thing. Yeah. I, it's just yeah. But if you say their name and continually right. say their name, like, Jessica, I appreciate that you're sitting down nicely today. And wow, George, you're doing a really right. nice job, I right? Them, yeah. yeah. Okay, That's too. helpful. Oh. I know. <laughs> So setting the stage, I talked about making sure you're lined up at the door, greet them as they enter. Um, also the same thing when they leave. Thank you for coming today. I enjoyed working with you today. Uh, do the same thing. Not let the bell dismiss the kids. You dismiss the students, right? Appreciate that you were on task today. Have a great next class period if you're in high school or have a great rest of your day if you're um, in elementary school, okay? So um, reviewing your classroom expectations, the teachers will have their classroom rules in there. That's one of the first things you want to go over, your agenda, introduce yourself, go over the classroom rules. If there are no classroom rules, you need to come up with three solid classroom rules that you're going to continually use each time you go substitute teaching. Could be be respectful, be open-minded. Um, be mindful of others, something like that. You need to come up with your three rules. And I, this is what I suggest to people. When you go to different classrooms and you see some really good classroom rules, take a picture of it. Keep it on your phone. If you go to another room and they don't have, you've got some good <coughs> classroom rules to follow that you can put up there. You can even put it out there to the kids. What would make our class work really well today? What are some rules we should have in our classroom today to make sure we work, work as a team? And put it out to them if you don't see any. That way you get them invested in their day, okay? Uh, be positive, patient, respectful in your inter interactions with them. Um, talked about the don't sitting, make sure you're walking around. At the end of the day, you want to remind the students of their homework. Make sure you return all the classroom materials to the proper place. Um, enlist the students to help you. You know, all right, boys and girls, 10 minutes before the bell rings, let's go around, let's pick up some rubbish on the floor, let's make sure your desks are tidy, let's make sure, you know, everything's put back in place. And if they help you, it's not a lot for you folks to have to do at the end of the day as well. Um, if the chairs need to be up, make sure they put the chairs up, those kind of things. Uh, one thing that I do with management and that kind of thing with, with the t students is you call them by tables, 
right? So the very last 10 minutes of your day, you want to wrap up your school day. Boys and girls, share out something that was fun about our day. What did we learn? What was exciting about what you learned in school today? Share that out. Do a popcorn. Don't ask everybody. It'll take you forever. Popcorn a few students. You know, what did you enjoy about today? What was a thing that you're walking away with today that maybe you didn't know about before, right? Um, what's your homework for today? What are you working on for homework tonight when you go home? Do a quick review. And then call them by tables to put up their chairs if they do that, and then meet and greet you on the floor. <coughs> right and then on the floor you would dismiss them to head out the door and just I appreciate all of you today we had a great day reiterate that if so-and-so was rotten and gave you a hard time the whole day oh I hope to see you again next time I student I teach in here and I'm looking forward to seeing you another day right because we know every day is different okay make sure you get the keys back to the office I've had some that have not returned the keys you got to make sure you get those keys back there is a blue form that you'll be filling out, a substitute report form. Um, the teachers want you to be honest about what happened during their day, your day. Here's the thing not to do. Don't put suggestions. You know, I really think you should do this with this child. Um, I think this child has a reading problem. Refrain from that. They know that. They're with these kids all year. What they want to hear is that you tried this with this student and that was working for them today, or they had a difficult time, but you reached out to this person to help you with them. Okay? So be careful what you do put on the report. Also, if it's your first time subbing in the classroom, you can attach a, you know, a business card to that form. I look forward to working with you again, you know, and have on there your email address. I love the substitutes that I used to have, and I can consistently just sort of send them my email through an email. I could send that lesson plan, you know, hey, I'm going to be out on Wednesday. Can I send you the lesson plan? And I would also have it printed on my desk as well in my teacher handbook folder but that way they could preview that lesson plan before they came in and they knew what to expect. And as a classroom teacher, you will, can, you will try your best to get those substitute teachers that you feel can really kind of roll your classroom the same way that you kind of do in some ways. And we will consistently keep calling those substitute teachers as a teacher. Is a substitute teacher report a permanent document? Good question. It is something that they do hold on to, admin will hold on to, and I'm sure it's going to get shredded sometime throughout the year, but it is a, they do keep it as a document to say this teacher was out and here was the sub, yes, because we turn them in, we sign them as a, we sign them as a uh, teacher, we rate, um, you know, how did the day go, you know, that's at the bottom, and then we turn it into our administration, and then they do store them, okay, so good question. All right, so that's the end of my PowerPoint, but I do have a handout for you folks. Um, the Teacher Substitute Handbook, if you can look at that, the Professional Substitute Teacher Handbook. And go to the appendix section. It's kind of in the middle, and I apologize, this is not numbered. It looks like this. Mine's color, sorry, yours isn't color. Okay, in here, there are a lot of great ideas of alternative things that you can do in the classroom if you don't have lesson plans. Okay, so there's some really good uh, different writing lessons. And what I want you to do is um, we're going to spend like the last five minutes or so just kind of perusing through it and looking at seeing what, what is in here and maybe share out something that you think is real fun. Um, one of my favorite ones that's in the back is using current events to develop emergency lesson plans. I really like that. You know, newspapers are in the office and not for us just to sit and read, but to use in your classroom, right? And these can get, go from second graders all the way up to 12th grade, that you can bring in a current event, okay, and share it and have the kids do a debate on a current event. You know, you can do a philosophical <coughs> chair, which I love to do. Um, a philosophical <coughs> chair is where the kids get on one side of the room and they're going to debate a topic. If they have access to a computer they could look up that topic and get a little bit more details about it and then they um, get on each side of the room and they have to paraphrase what the other person said about the debate while they understand what you're saying and they get to rebuttal on it debates are fun if you're doing it with a sub with, as a substitute in the classroom come up with some rules boys and girls what kind of rules do you think we need today with our debate um, and let them come up with some of the guidelines and rules and you chime in and add more that's the kind of teacher I am. I'm very much a kind of teacher who I let the kids kind of guide, us, guide me along. 
Um, so I often will come up with rules and rubrics and things like that with my students so that they are invested in that learning process, okay? I'm gonna switch gears to another one that I really like, which is the little engagement strategies, this little bingo card. <coughs> These are some great little pockets of information. This is a single handout that I gave you. Uh, it's just some things to think about. A graphic organizer. You can go on to Super Worksheets. That's a free site um, that you, some of it's free, some of it they want you to pay for, but you can go on to Super Worksheets. It's K through 12. You can print out a worksheet um, of a graphic organizer, like a Venn diagram. You could bring in one of your favorite books in your toolkit of your backpack, right? You're gonna put a lot of things in there. And if you wanted to share out a book, and maybe you're gonna do a Cinderella, maybe you have two different kinds of Cinderella books in there and you compare and contrast the Korean Cinderella to the Hawaiian Cinderella, right? Just some things that you kind of have in your pocket to um, help the students if there's not a lot to do within that lesson plan for the day. There's a gallery walk. Gallery walks are a lot of fun. I, I like to do that with math concepts. If you're teaching high school math, you can put a high school, you can put a, um, a problem on one sheet of chart paper and you can have four different groups going on and so you just post that up and you have the kids go around and do a gallery walk and write some strategies on how to solve that math problem. Gets the kids up and moving. You want to have your kids up and moving, right? In an organized way. So how would you do that in an organized way? You would model it. You know, hey, would you mind modeling for me today how we're going to get up and do this activity? And here's the rules that we're going to do it. And you model that with the kids, OK? Um, so these are a bunch of different ideas to just put in your little pocket of tricks when you folks head out to do some subbing, right? Just to um, have some things in there, and just in case there's not a lot with the lesson plans. I'm going to share out a couple of videos with you uh, that some different concepts that you can do. This one is called Turn and Talk, and this is actually in a middle school classroom. Do any of you teach in a middle or high school classroom setting? Okay, it's real short. Turn and Talk is basically an opportunity for the students to interact with each other. Um, usually you can do that as a warm-up or a closing. Usually you ask them a question, an essential question related to the content that you're teaching. How are adaptation and natural selection related? Okay, I want you to turn and talk. So that means turn to your shoulder partner and talk about this question. And I'll, I'll read the question out loud and I'll tell the students, I want you to go ahead and turn to your shoulder partner, or turn and talk, and discuss this question. It's a great way for the kids to sort of help each other remember what we learned from the last class or sort of sort of give each other ideas of what we're talking about today. What I like the most about Turn and Talk is letting the students talk to each other and sort of help teach each other um, because it's easy for me as a teacher to stand up there and talk and tell them information, but it's interesting to see what they remember and how they explain things to each other as opposed to how maybe I might say something that might be a little too extended and um, we'll be able to phrase it in a way that's more seventh grade teen friendly. So with that turn and talk, um, that could be after you give an instruction. So you give an instruction for an activity, turn and talk to your um, elbow partner, turn and talk to your A partner or B partner. Um, sometimes they, schools have different terminology for them. The schools that I'm working with out on the coast right now, they use the terminology buddy buzz. We're going to buddy buzz. So buddy buzz with your partner. Great way to make sure that they understand that activity. Bring them back together afterwards and say, okay, what did you two share out about what we're working on or about this concept that you just learned? Can you share out with the class? And then you're ready to go, right? Ready to move forward into your lesson. One of the questions that came up is how do you how do you get through what they what this teacher would like you to do for the day? How do you get through those lesson plans? It's through pacing. It's through knowing and reading through what they want you to do and making sure you have everything when you're ready to start that activity. And that's part of getting there on time and getting there early. And and looking for that teacher guidebook, right? Of um, what that assignment needs and to ensure that it's gonna uh, roll out the right way. Um, another thing to do is just to 
have a little talk with a neighbor next door. You know what, I'm going to be teaching this. I'm not quite sure. What are your thoughts? Give me some ideas. That's also really helpful. Um, but you really want to try your best to get through every part of what the teacher's asking you to do. We're not just making fluff lesson plans because there's a substitute <coughs> for the day. Um, we have to, ha you know, maybe on Friday we're going to give a quiz about this information that the students are learning. So you want to really just try your best. Another suggestion I have for you if you're new to subbing um, is, and you have a desirable school that you really enjoy going to, is to ask the principal, can I just come in and observe for the day? Can I come in and observe five of your different classrooms? Can I go in and see your PE for 30 minutes? Can I go see your social studies classroom? Can I go see what it's like to work in the library for the day? That way you know already ahead of time what you're walking into, okay? And if you're walking into a classroom and there's just a lot of classroom management issues, um, that kind of thing, you're going to have to pull some things out of your pocket to help manage your day. Um, and that's just going to be to be very structured. All right, boys and girls, here's what we're working on next. Um, I need you to be ready to go, stay on task, sit up straight. Um, I like to refrain from telling kids to put their heads down. I just feel like that's so being, you know, put your head down. I just feel like I always say to the kids, sit up straight. Show me you're ready and sit up straight. And they'll sit up straight and be ready to go. Um, if they're not, you just gently, it's your proximity and walking next to that child and say, you know, I. I need you to sit up straight. I've asked you once, that's your warning, so please get ready to go or show me you're ready, whatever you're saying. But you gotta give these gentle reminders to your students and not announce it to the whole class. Johnny, told you to not do that, third time already, you need to stop back there, right? You're, you've already lost the respect for the whole class by doing that. So you gotta be very personable with your, with your feedback to your students. Somebody next to that child who is just being not you know, working the way they need to do, and this person's doing a really good job, hey, I really appreciate that you're so focused today, you're doing fantastic, that kind of thing. You also wanna refrain from saying, I'm gonna put all this down on this piece of paper and I'm gonna share it out with your substitute teacher, with your regular ed teacher. That's like saying, when dad gets home, I'm going to tell him all about what you just did, or mom gets home, or whatever. You've already given up that authority that you can't handle them. So you want to refrain from that. You want to just say, you know, let's have this <coughs> agreement. I've got 20 minutes that I want you to sit and do this work. After 20 minutes, I'm going to let you get up and go for a little walk and do this around the classroom, or have them be your helper for the day. You know, um, I need you to do this for me, kind of thing. We as teachers even do something where we just have an envelope in our bag and we have a classroom where we send them off to if they just need a break and that could be the next door classroom. Okay, so if that's your GLC, the grade level chair or someone that you uh, just met that morning, say, hey, if I have a hard time with a student and they just need a walking break, they're going to bring you an envelope. Can you just please ask them how their day's going and make sure that, you know, you talk to them a little bit about making sure they stay on task in the classroom. Sometimes they just need a break. Um, and we have that worked out with some of our students that we do that. And it's not you giving up the control, it's that child needing a, a break. We all need breaks, right? Like I couldn't talk to you for two hours without saying, hey, everybody stand up, take a break, move, or move around kind of thing. Question? And that's going to come in with your classroom management next door, but I could <laughs> tap on it because, um, and I tend to get a lot of the students who, when I was in the classroom, they'd like give me the ones that were just the little rock stars of the school. I got them. And, and I loved them because I knew I could flip their behavior before the end of the year. And if they're cussing and doing profanity, which is I think one of the things that you had mentioned earlier, or somebody had mentioned, that's something where you just gotta go up to that student and you gotta have that talk with them. You know what, we're in here today for 40 minutes. I need you to do this. What can you do to help me with that? And you're just, the way you present yourself to them, and you're not presenting it as to, how, how are we gonna change your behavior? Well, I'm not gonna change it, I have no problems, right? So when you put it into a question, they're gonna pop it right back at you. I need you to do this. I need you to focus on this today. What can we do to get you there, right? You have this much assignments to do. It looks like if you don't get those done, it's gonna become that extra homework. I'm here to help you with that. What are you struggling with right now? And the behaviors come because of the fact that the work is probably sometimes too hard for them. So the way that they get through that to show that they're not smart is to misbehave. 
right? And they misbehave because that attention gets taken away that they are struggling with that assignment. And then they're trying to wiggle their way out of it, right? So that's one of my suggestions. I hope that helps. It's just to um, be really personable about it. Need you to do this. Can't wait to see you again. Keep working on this. If it becomes a chapter 19, and you need to be familiar with what are chapter 19s. Chapter 19 is a handbook that you need to ask your administration for. Can I get a look at the chapter 19 book? That's in the public education settings. Those are the things that immediately is a referral. Send them to the office on a referral. Your teachers will have these referrals, hopefully in their sub plans, and if they don't, you, you, know, you might look around into their desk to see where there's a referral. On the referral, you have to write all the information about what happened, and then you have to send that child up to the office. If they're refusing to go to the office, that's where you make a phone call to the counselor, if there's a counselor, if not to the VP, and just say, I really need you to come down and address the situation for me. Right? In the meantime, when you're writing the referral, you got to have the rest of your class working on an activity. Okay? Because if you're sitting there at the desk and you're writing a referral and this kid's out of control um, and you're not, these kids are not doing anything, that's when you're going to have a lot of chaoticness in your classroom. So it may be, you know what, boys and girls, I need you right now to pull out that reading book that you have in your desk or I need you to uh, get onto your computer and work on iReady or whatever they have going on, get them taken care of first then address your situation, okay? Um, and if it's really unruly, you're just going to get on the phone and call admin to come down. Question? Do you feel at times sometimes um, correcting a, a student's behavior might have to get to the point where it is the classroom, you, you can't necessarily be one-on-one -on -one with them, if that makes any sense? I've had a scenario as an emergency sub where, yeah. and this was middle school, the child was completely, right. you know, all over the place, it's <coughs> totally obnoxious. I hate to say right, that word. Right, 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 right. So it did cause for me, it wasn't a shouting match, but I said, you need to leave the classroom. Yes. And I did have to call. Yes. The yes. Them. Yes. So. And there are times that you will have to do that. Okay. Where, I was and just it's. wondering, is that like yeah. appropriate or going too it, far? It, no. Or and what you, and here's what I suggest with that. That's a quick question to have with your, with the counselor, or with the vice principal. You know, I'm new to subbing at your school. Mm -hmm. um, please let me know what is the procedure. If I have a child doing this, I'm going to call the office and have them removed right. kind of thing. And that is pretty much the protocol. Um, okay. For most schools that I'm in, they do want that because we got to move them out. Right, because I worked in the school. Yes. So I was familiar with the children already, and it was one of those, I guess, the teacher got sick, woke mm -hmm. up sick or whatever, so they asked them to come into the classroom. Right. So it was just one of those situations where they knew me, I knew them, but right. it was just... Definitely right. Trying to see how far he could go. Right. I guess. Right. And sometimes, great, great question and good point. Sometimes you'll go in a classroom. And there's an educational assistant, or there's a PPT that's in there. Those they know those te those kids really well. Yeah. They're your go-to person as well. That will be there to help you. And if you're just on your own, you got to use the strategies that I just shared with you folks. Right. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is you do not want to get into a challenging match that I'm in control. And you know what? You're going to abide by what I'm saying today and start this whole. Yeah. fighting match because mm -hmm. it's not going to work and that kid's going to come out to show that you know what you have no control. I just kind of it was at that point we weren't arguing mm -hmm. right I was trying my best to keep the classroom management okay why don't you sit here do yes this. and at that point I said like, I don't argue with 11 year old no you, know, you can just <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's time out. for you just just to yeah. go for a walk and head up to the office yeah, and that's yeah and sometimes those kids and that's protocol even with the teacher mm -hmm. you know sometimes those kids just need to go breathe oh. Right, and they'll come back, and you won't even think like they're a whole new kid, and you're like, "Whoa, <laughs> what happened?" Right, and sometimes that's just part of their learning, and it's part of their behaviors. And teachers know have been working with them. Often, you will have in your lesson plans who to who to talk to in the classroom. Who's the one key person to go to? You know, I've always had those. Who, you know, what are some of the accommodations that we make for some of the students in here? who to kind of watch out for, you know, that might be triggers for them, um, that kind of thing. I want to open it up to questions for you folks that maybe I didn't answer that I could perhaps answer. So, I got thrown into it the last minute. Uh-huh. Special needs. Okay. I didn't, get, I didn't get any prep of what the issues were, so. Right. But it's not necessarily that they're behind in any way. And right. That's just something to bear in mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's tricky because some of, their, some of them are very, Yes, very true. Yeah, very, very true. Any other questions that I might not have answered for you folks? Anything you want me to elaborate more on if you're not going to classroom management? Go ahead. Say, if 
you're solving for an um, inclusion class, yes. as a regular teacher, yes. and you're, you're working with a special ed students, so maybe three or four students in that class. Right. But uh, there's that, uh, how do you control uh, cell phone use? Some school allows them. Yes. But they get to be abused sometimes. Yes. So that's a, that's a really good question. Policy, you got to ask the school what is their policy. You need to know what their cell phone policy is. That's the thing. Sometimes that uh, regular teacher allows them. Yes. And he's pretty lenient about it. But right. Then, you know, right. Right. I, I, here, here's what I would do if I were you. And if you, for the day, you don't really know what, what the rules are with it. So I would just say to the students, you know what, boys and girls, that's the rules with your teacher, but the rules with me today, until I know for sure that your teacher allows you to do this, is we're going to not use cell phones in this class period. Um, so your f cell phones need to be put away, right? And that's what I would do. Have them put it into their backpack. I've even seen people that have cell phone jars, and you just collect them for the day in that period, and they go into there, and the kids pick them up on the way out if it becomes an issue. Um, and then I would reach out to that teacher after you're done with subbing and say, what is your policy on, on cell phones so I know the next time that I'm in here? The kids have cell phones everywhere. I'm in an elementary school classroom the other day doing an observation on a new teacher, and they're in their pockets. They're mm -hmm. all over the place, and they go to the bathroom. I walk by the bathroom, they're in there. Miss, are you going to take my phone away? No, I'm not going to take your phone away, but you need to go put it away in your classroom. You know, I'm, that's, that's protocol for it. And it's just part of how it is now with cell phones. You also want to be careful that they're not, they're not videotaping things in the classroom to share out later. Right? There's that part because that's the whole part of we at the DOE, these kids have to sign waivers that they can be videotaped for us to even videotape in a classroom setting. Um, right? So if kids are whipping out their phones and they're videotaping somebody and that goes on Facebook and whatever else, you're in a whole different boat. So I honestly would say no cell phones if I was substitute teaching. You know, your teacher may allow it, but my rules today is we're not, we don't need it for any research that we're doing in the classroom, so it needs to stay in your backpack. Right? that help? Okay. I'm sorry. Do yeah. you have the right to just take the phones when they come in? Like, you haven't done anything wrong? Yeah. Because there's some sneaky kids. There is. And I've had kids even try to, like, really charge their phones right. during class. Right. Like, right. 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 <laughs> You know, and if I didn't see, like if you went in the classroom and there's not a place that says cell phones put here, I honestly, I don't think I would take the cell phone away. I wouldn't do a battle with a cell phone is what I wouldn't do. Because I've always, that, that the student, she had her phone charging. Right. And it is, she's not on it. And yes. And that's her defense. Well, I'm not on it. I'm just charging it. And it's a distraction. So you need to say, turn your phone off. Yeah. Please okay. turn your phone off. It's, it's okay if you're charging your phone, but please turn your phone off. Especially in a middle high school setting, yeah. right? Because it got to that point where it's like, well, can I charge my phone? Well, then can I charge my? You know what I mean? So right. I'm wondering, can we just take them? But it's a battle that's unnecessary. And then if you drop that phone, or they say you dropped my phone, you cracked my phone, right? It becomes a whole responsibility when you take that phone. Yeah. Yeah. I I would just say zip it up in your backpack. Yeah. Yeah. And charge it in the next class with a regular ed teacher, <laughs> with the other sure, teacher that's, that's in there. Yeah. Parents are not supposed to be parents are not supposed to be contacting their children through the school they through a cell phone. It's not supposed to be happening. Um, so that's always been protocol at the schools that I've been at. They're supposed to contact the office. The kids are supposed to turn off their phones when they come into class and have them shut off and turn them off after school. Um, is what I've been around. Yeah. Giving them something to motivate them to turn it in so you're not just saying, give me your cell phone. Right. You're saying, right. you know, have, have <coughs> in your toolkit. Right. A, a method, a strategy. Some kind of a strategy that you're bringing in. If you yep. give your cell phone, you get points or whatever right. kind of system you have. Right, which is a good idea. But to be careful if you are collecting them because you don't, right, right. Want, want the responsibility. Yeah, something, but then if somebody grabs the wrong cell phone, like when they're leaving class, how do you know that is their cell phone? So you run into a lot of different situations. 
You could even just be where you give the students points on the board for the whole entire class of no one taking out their cell phone. You know what, after five points, we're gonna play a game, and there's lots of ideas of games in here. Jeopardy, there's all kinds of fun things, you know, in last five minutes of class, 10 minutes of class, we're going to do this as a class. All right, boys and girls, are you ready? Who's, you know, and motivate them that way if it becomes a problem. Yeah, yeah. But it is part of, part of how we are nowadays, right? Just changing the subject yeah. a little bit. If we're fortunate enough to get a long-term subject yes. job, um, what is the response, like say, if the teacher was out because they were ill the whole semester? Yeah. Yes. What is the responsibility for us in terms of record keeping? Yes. Conference yes. Semester, you are it. Yep. Uh, so you have sure. academic coaches that will help you, and that's what my job was when I was at one particular school. I would work with my long-term subs, help them organize for report cards. Parent conferences are going to be up to your administration if they want to have the parent conferences or hold the parent conferences after that teacher returns. So those are questions that you would ask. Long-term subbing, you do not get any extra money for it. Um, Long-term subbing becomes a factor that you know you're going to have a job every day for the next three months and you're not having to pop around. So those are the benefits of a long-term sub. Long-term subbing also works out if you're deciding to go into a teaching program to become a teacher because there are times if you're in a middle school or high school that if you are doing a long-term sub and they know you really well and it's coming time for you to student teach, you could actually do a validation if you're in a middle school, high school setting that you are teaching in that content area. So there's a lot of benefits of long-term subbing. You also need to attend the faculty meetings, the grade level meetings, right? So they want you to be on board with that. You're welcome to leave at 245. Administration can't keep you for that extended um, 45 minutes that as teachers have to go to on Wednesdays at 3, you know, 3.30. You get to leave. That's the, that's the thing for you. But it's up to your benefit to kind of be there to hear what's going on with the grade level. But you are the record keeper. And what kind of experience do you have with this? This is where you're going to reach out to your academic coaches at the school to the grade level chair and say, you know, I accepted this long-term sub. I'm going to need some coaching with this. Can you help me and share with me what do I need to do for record keeping? Because um, you will ultimately be doing the report cards, right? You'll be on board or you may be working with a coach to do the report cards, okay? But there are a lot of benefits of it. Some people like to just pop around and not have to do the grading and that sort of thing. That's another thing I didn't touch on. You know, during the prep period or the last 45 minutes of your day, you really want to try and help that teacher with any of the grading that you can. If there's a key, um, grade those papers for them. Help them out, right? If they've asked you to do it or not asked you to do it. If there's a key and you can do it, then go ahead and do that for them. That's always appreciated, um, okay? How are we doing on time? I'm at the time. One quick question. I've heard conflicting um, information. Mm -hmm. Do you need a bachelor's degree to substitute teaching one? On the website, it's a different level. Yes. Everybody I've talked to says you do have to. So I really suggest calling the Department of Education and asking them what are your guidelines for substitute teaching. You know, I'm, I'm working in Nanakuli Wai'anae area where we don't have a lot of substitute teachers. So they have grandfathered in a few that do not have degrees um, and they, they are working with that. It just really depends and I highly suggest just call the Department of Education and ask them what is your policy for substitute teaching and what do I need to do to get to become a substitute. Okay, um, yes? Sorry, just real quick, um, just war stories. I haven't done substitute teaching for very long. Right. I'm stuck with um, my schedule. High school mathematics. Yes. And I find myself trying to remember 30 years ago when I was yes. back then. Yes. Are there any websites? I, I don't know. Yeah. There were websites that were teaching this high school math and science. Yes. And so it was important for me in that field mm -hmm. to have a laptop in order to go to the same class yes. the students were going to. Yes. So that was just another resource that was necessary for these math and science courses. Yes. Uh, but on the flip side, is there any um, useful site that has the curriculum or the things when you get a lesson plan and it's this topic? Yeah. There is not one stop shop. But there is something called Khan Academy. Have you folks heard of Khan Academy? K A H N Academy, Khan Academy, which actually was started by Bill Gates. And so if you're teaching a lot of math courses yourself, I highly suggest you go on there and Khan Academy, you take a test, it places you in a certain level, and it'll you can go in and look at these tutorials of the concepts that you're teaching in 12th grade math or 7th grade or even 5th grade. It's different. Yeah. 
than when we all learn math. I'm being honest, and I'm old. <laughs> it is different, different concepts, right? And so it's good to familiarize yourself and, and sort of get that brain working again about what you need to do. Because you can pretty much get through a language arts lesson, a, a writing lesson for the most part. You get to math, it starts to get a little bit more complicated, right? Even the science, Khan Academy has science as well. Um, in there. I highly suggest going on TeacherTube. Uh, that's where I showed you guys some of the videos today. There's TeacherTube. There's a lot of resources out there for you folks just if you continually teach in one subject area and not feeling so confident about it. Um, and there's certain strategies that they're asking for you to teach. You can just Google in that strategy and put video after it. Up pops a video about it, just like the talk and turn video that I showed with you folks today. Um, another one I didn't get to that I totally um, and I need to let you guys go because I think it's time, is this HOTS question. So this is Bloom's taxonomy, right? Getting to that higher level of thinking that we want our kids to get to and engaging them. And that's, you know, you're going to walk into classroom of a gifted class or maybe, um, you know, not all SPED court classes. And so these are really good concepts and sentence stems that you can use for your students. And you could just have them um, Xerox off and say, you know what, we're going to work on some comprehension questions after I read the story today. And you can cut these in strips and you can give it to a group. You're going to work on this question, you're going to work on that question and share back out. Um, so this is all Bloom's taxonomy, okay? If you Google the word HOTS um, question stems, you're going to see some videos on that. And I wanted to share one with you, but it was, I'm out of time. But these are really good, okay? This is what the Department of Ed is working towards and moving towards. When we go into classrooms to observe classrooms, we're looking for higher order thinking skills. And these are things you can engage them in. The more you engage your students in higher order thinking, critical thinking, moving around in your classroom, the better behavior your kids are going to be for the day. They are. So if you've got lesson plans and it says worksheet, 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 say, you know what, you five kids can go work on the floor over here and take whiteboards and you can work on your worksheets over there. You four, hey, how about you guys work in this table? Group them, move them around, get them moving. You know, you can have I agree, disagree, um, you can have a move. Hey, what do you think about this question? Move over there and if you're in that group and you agree, head over there and call on one person to share out what's that strategy or what did you learn from that, okay? Okay, thank you.